Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Hi. not live. It's recorded because Will's a tired boy. Ow, I just hit my chin on this, and it shocked me. It didn't scare me. I was shocked oh, by it. Um, shocking. <laughs> shocking. Uh, it's episode, what is it, 92? Every time these episodes creep up, I just think about oh how you want God. me to redesign everything for 100, and I just <laughs> sigh. <laughs> Honestly, I the thing that makes me hesitant about that is we have extra life between now and then, yeah. which is an even bigger amount of work. So I, I have the idea of our of our rebrand for this show written down, and it's a good idea. I just need to like sit down and do it, and I don't think it's actually going to take that long because it's it's one scene I have to do. So well, like I, I, new logo and one scene. Yeah, 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 yeah that too. Yeah. And, um, um, and we're going to change some tech behind the scenes too, but that's my job. That's my job to experiment yeah. with that. Make sure it's working. I refuse to. I don't experiment outside of sex. <laughs> that's the only thing. Um, sorry, it's very early. It's oh 8.04 in God. the morning. I do. I never wake up. Do I don't do anything this early except sex. What's um, wrong with you? I don't know. Um... What what have you been playing? Just talk to me. I've been playing some games. Um, the game that I've actually been playing is called Arcade Paradise. Have you heard of this game? Well, for some reason, I think you streamed it while I was gone. Yes, is that right? Uh, it's very good. Okay, yeah. So I number one, I don't watch our own content. Number two, I definitely don't watch it when I'm not here. So, um. I only played this because Jeff Gerstmann keeps talking about it. Like he brought it up on the Jeff Gerstmann podcast and then he brought it up again. And then he brought it the third week. He was just like, I can't stop playing this game and I love it so much. And I'm like, OK, all right. So Arcade Paradise is um, it's a game in which you are running your father's laundromat. But there's also a room in the back for arcade machines. And so basically you're balancing the laundry business with the arcade machines. It's all first person. It feels like it's probably like Unreal Engine 4. So you're kind of running around, you know, timer goes off, which means the washing machine is done. So you got to. Excuse me, morning burps. You got to <laughs> grab the uh, you got to grab the laundry out of the washing machine, put them in the dryer. And then the cool thing is the arcade machines are all playable. So they're all playable games. And they're actually like like. Um, the way Jeff Gersman describes it, one of them is basically GTA Pac-Man. So it's a GTA style Pac-Man. So it looks like GTA 1, but it's Pac-Man yeah. gameplay. But if they catch you, then you can kind of run around shooting music beats at them to get back to your car. So it's all these like really interesting takes on existing games, but with nice little twists on them. Um, and so you're kind of just running that business. And I've probably played, I want to say five or six hours over the last couple of days, because it's one of those games where you're just like, one more day. One more day. Let me get done with this laundry load, you know, and you just keep playing it. Um, what What was your take on it, Will? Uh, I, you were here for the episode. I talked about it because I specifically remember telling you about the GTA Pac-Man and you being like, oh, that sounds cool. Um, so I'm guessing no. it's getting conflated in your mind that I'm some big personality named Jeff Gersman. But no, it's fine. definitely Jeff Gersman. I'm pretty um, sure I've missed a lot of local chat lately. <laughs> I, I I distinctly remember telling you about it. So this is this is me telling you about the game, uh, and I'm taking credit for it. Uh, no, What's I really enjoyed it. It's um, love at first sight. Um, I I really enjoy it. It's a good like podcast game, as we always talk about. Um, mm -hmm. And on top of that, the like you said, the visual style for like the Unreal Engine Four it reminds me of those like I think it's called House Party. And like those different like basic Unreal Engine four games, so I think you yeah. hit the nail on the head with that. But yeah, the arcade I mean, it... games being playable are super fun. Uh, yeah, I, I think I just got the upgrade to buy another room, but right before I got the story beat for it, I spent my money on something else, so I had to then like start over with the money. Yeah, which is the only hurdle. I I will say. I don't think the game's that good. And here's why. There is like there's like a big problem with it, which is there's basically there's basically three ways. There's basically four things you can do, right? This is a plate spinning game where you're keeping some plates spinning, you're keeping track of stuff, but there's pretty much only like four major things to do. Number one, you can run around and pick up trash, but 99% of the trash shows up in the morning. So you can't really run around during the day picking up trash because there's not trash being generated. Number two is do the laundry. 
which I kind of enjoy doing the laundry. It's basically people drop off baskets. You put the basket in the washing machine. You wait literally three minutes. Um, I mean, time moves faster in the game, but for our time, it's three minutes. Uh, and then your watch goes off and says washer's done. You take it out of the washer, you put it in the dryer, another three minutes, and then you take it out and you put it on a, on a table. Um, that's the laundry bit. There's the you can collect coins from the arcade machines and the and the and the tokens where you run around and you go to an arcade machine, you go, give me the coins, give me the coins, you empty the coin hopper. And then you can play the arcade games. That's not enough plates. And some of those plates suck. Like honestly, like I, I enjoy collecting the trash. It just doesn't it doesn't respawn enough. It's literally every morning collect all the trash, then there's maybe two pieces of trash that show up during the day. Um, the laundry, I kind of enjoy the laundry, like I said, but there's a lot of waiting. I've literally gotten to the point where I'll get all the laundry in there and I'm looking at a timer and it says 40 seconds and I go, okay, let me pull out my phone for 40 seconds. And I keep doing that. Um, the games, they they are kind of fun, but the problem is I don't like the idea of, oh, I want to play this game, but my watch is going to go off in 30 seconds. It gives me, it makes me too anxious about playing that game. Um, and then... Oh, collecting the coins. Uh, it's just not a fun activity. So it's one of those things where you're like, you're trying to spin the plates, but there's not enough. There's not enough plates and there's not enough exciting plates for for me to feel like the six hours I played that game. I probably only played maybe four of that because two hours of that I was watching a stream off to the side or like actively on my phone waiting for something to happen. Yeah. And that's my big problem with the game. I think I think if and I don't know because I haven't played enough of it. But if there becomes a point where it's like, hey, I want to hire hire someone for automatic laundry or automatic coin collection, like that yeah. would make it better. But that was my exact problem with the playing the games is I would I would never get far into that like candy crush one because every time like I would get somewhere or like work on fighting someone, the laundry would go off and I'm like, I got to do the laundry. I got to get S tier laundry. So I'd yeah, run all the way back. That's the other thing is that you you don't have to do the laundry right away. But if you were like if you think about the full lifespan of laundry as in somebody placed it on the table to you placing it on the delivery table, if you don't hit that perfect window, like do perfect transitions immediately, if you're probably like 30 seconds outside of that window, you make five dollars. If you perfect that window and do S rank laundry, you make thirty dollars. So so it is very punishing in game if you don't flip laundry immediately. And that's the problem, like you said, is that you're playing a game and there are times where I'm like, I'm having fun in this game. I should keep going. And then I go, no, I'm about to lose twenty five fucking dollars per load because I'm playing this game. And money's kind of hard. Like an arcade machine is five hundred to a thousand dollars depending on the machine. So you're so you have to grind this money out and it's not that big of a grind, except if you want to play the arcade games and then all of a sudden it starts going slow as shit. So it it has so much promise. I just they didn't get the plate spinning right. And that's upsetting to me. I just love that the point of this game is you're moving. You're trying to secretly do an arcade and not do the laundry stuff. But in reality, we're stressing out about the laundry stuff. So we never have time <laughs> yes. to do the arcade. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's it like it's weird. Like I enjoy the arcade games, but man, I really just want in my head. I know this is not what the game is going to become, but in my head, the end of this game is I have like I'm doing like I've got a chart and it says you're doing 100 loads of laundry a minute. And I'm like, fuck, yes, I've got like four tier washing machines, baby. And it's a fucking like library system and I'm climbing up on ladders for them. Like, I know that's not what this game is. It says arcade paradise, but I really just want it to be laundry paradise. You know, that's laundry. where I'm having my fun. Yeah, it's like you want it to be an incremental. It's it's like so close to being it. Um that I, yeah. I agree. Um I, I, I will say, say oh, I will say. <laughs> I will say. Uh, <laughs> this game is i think it's i think it's 20 bucks um if this interests you at all you know what it's an indie game go out buy it have some fun with it like i said i i played six hours from it and i wasn't even enthralled i i was enthralled by it but but it's not a perfect game so like you're gonna get your enjoyment out of it it's it's definitely fun it, support your indie games this, there's something cool going on here yeah and the the inclusion of custom arcade games is the like they could have easily yes phoned that in but they did a cool spin on them. So like props to that. Like they're, they're genuinely yeah. fun, fun game. I think there's like 20 of them in the game. So there's a lot of them too. And they're each unique. Yeah. Um, next game I played, 
uh, is a little game called Overwatch 2. Um, Overwatch 2 came out. Look. God. Have you actually played any of it? I have not actually played any Overwatch 2, and here's why. Number one, um, Sunday, Sunday or Monday, they took Overwatch offline. They said, you're not allowed to play Overwatch anymore, which we've talked about before. I'm going to try not to, to complain too much about it because that's fucking stupid. But basically, they said, look, we want everybody playing Overwatch 2. So in order to do that, we're going to literally shut down Overwatch 1 like 24 to 48 hours before we launch Overwatch 2. And it was really wonky because in Battle.net, the day that Overwatch 2 came out, I went into Battle.net in the morning and I was like, oh, I want to preload Overwatch 2. There's no Overwatch 2 in Battle.net. It's just Overwatch. And I was like, oh. I was like, okay, but it still let me install the game. So I was like, I'm just going to install it. And I installed it. And I still don't know if I installed Overwatch 1 or Overwatch 2 because I came back later. And that exact same page, I hadn't touched anything about it. That exact same page had flipped and now it was Overwatch 2. <laughs> and I was like, what are you fucking idiots doing? Like, <laughs> all like they just have to add, like, all their problems. All their problems are because they think they're trying to tout this as a sequel. You know, all they had to do to like prevent that mentality of, from people is just add two fucking characters to the name of this. You just call it point O. You just call it Overwatch 2.0 and people go, oh, it's not a sequel. It's just a big update to Overwatch. That's pretty and cool. that means, so it's not, we're not killing the old Overwatch. We're releasing a giant update. It's changing a lot of things, but it's not a sequel. But the problem is when you call it a sequel and you kill off the original game, like literally kill the original game, after what four or five years of it being out there it's just like anyways i can't play the game there's two things preventing me from playing the game number one sorry i'm gonna blow my nose real quick uh, will tell me about your overwatch experience i played overwatch once when it came out on the xbox one i played a couple matches and i was like hey this is like team fortress which i also don't like um and i shouldn't say <laughs> don't like shit. it's just I've Your never shit. played them enough to enjoy them. So I, I also don't know how any of those games work. Um, so, yeah, that's my experience. I played a lot of Overwatch 1. I'm not a big Blizzard fan, but I really like the beta. So I actually took off work to play be Overwatch when it came out with some friends, which I remember now because when Overwatch 1 came out, it had alphas, it had betas, and it worked. Day one. I remember we had... I don't even think we had we may have had issues the first 30 minutes when it launched. But after that, we were we were playing all day. Right. Overwatch 2 is on fire. You know, admittedly, part of that is, according to them, they're under a DDoS attack. But the other part of it is there's just queues. People are getting into matches and then getting disconnected. I tried to play for a total of probably two hours the other night. I literally just had it off on a, on a side monitor and it was just ticking down the queue. And then every five, 10 minutes, it would say error rejoin queue and I'd have to click a button to rejoin the queue. It's it's on fire, which is like fucking inexcusable. When you had an alpha, you've had a beta, you've been pushing out massive multiplayer games for more than a fucking decade now, more than like two decades, right? I, I don't know when fucking WoW came out. And then the other thing is you took down the Overwatch servers, right? Like, I don't know if this is actually what happened, but if you're smart, you would have taken those Overwatch servers down and immediately converted them into Overwatch 2 servers. So you have that capacity plus whatever launch capacity you put on top of it. You fucking idiots, you know? <laughs> so it's like you have such like a huge marketing mismanagement with a sequel. Then you kill off the original and then you can't even launch the fucking game. And then on top of it, you have a fucking uh, uh, executive level two cent idea, which is, hey, what if we just require people to put in their phone number so that they can't cheat? Right. So they can't be assholes in voice chat, because if you do, then we'll ban you based on your phone number. And it's not a terrible idea. It right. has problems with it, though. And they didn't think those through. And one of the big problems is that apparently if you are part of a pay up front slash prepaid cell plan, such as Cricket Wireless or Metro PCS by or Metro by T-Mobile, whatever they call it, or Boost, they don't accept your phone number. So I found out yesterday that my my carrier is Metro. I like Metro. It's dirt cheap. I'm not tied into a contract. It gives me exactly what I need. I've got unlimited for like 40 bucks a month per line, and I'm not stuck in a contract. I can bring my own device. It's a great cell plan. 
I'm, I'm fucking dirt trash to Activision apparently because <laughs> my phone number is blocked. I don't know that for certain, but looking online, people are like, yeah, Activision told me Metro is blocked. So if you have a Metro phone number, you can't play Overwatch 2. Now, granted, they, they rolled that back a little bit. They said that today on uh, this the Friday after the game came out that they're going to put in a provision that says if you ever played Overwatch 1, then you are you don't have to put in a phone number. But there are still plenty of people who never played Overwatch 1 yeah, who that's... have Metro or Boost or Crickus that are going to get fucked by this. And it's like, it's, it's fucking ridiculous, you know? It's like, this game, look, I, I, I bet this game plays great. Overwatch 1 played great. I think Overwatch 2 is going to play just as good. It's everything else around it that they're fucking it up. Like, I'm, I'm upset about this. Are you upset about this, Will? Well, it's just like, it's not this, so don't take it wrong, but... It's almost like, uh, God, what is the word? It's not racism because it isn't, but it's like against, I feel classism because elitism in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Because like generally I think the stereotype of those types of phone services is for lower end classes, low, low class, middle class, because they're more affordable. You can pay by the month, that sort of thing. So they they have smaller plans. Yeah. Yeah, they but have it's smaller like, plans. Hey, so, if you're poor. so if you can't afford, yeah. If you sorry, I'm just gonna say, if you can't afford a full plan, like if you go to AT and T, the minimum of fucking plan is probably like forty five dollars a month. But if you go to Mint, you go to Boost, you go to Cricket, you could be like, look, I just need like fifty text messages a month. They'll be like, great, ten dollar plan. Like, yeah, they they are affordable. There is a very specific purpose in the marketplace. Um, th- I think I don't want to say there's a myth, but like one of the services they blocked is Google Voice. I totally understand that block Google voice because anybody can go in for free and get a phone number from Google voice and and be an asshole with it. But these are legitimate use cases where 99% of the people on these cell companies are valid users. Don't be an asshole and block these valid users just because you have some assumption that some of them may use that provider to game the system because it's easier to go to Walmart and pick up a $40 cricket one month plan than it is to go to A&T and T and sign up for a new one. That's just bullshit. Yeah. I was trying to think of a, a different way, like a different scenario where that could like, it's something anyone can do. Yes. You can buy burner phones, but there's also people who the legit use cases for those. So it's like whether you, you are paycheck to paycheck and you need something cheap or you're just frugal, like people use this and you're, you're accidentally being classist by forcing people to not, be able to play you're like well we don't want poor people playing overwatch 2 they're gonna ruin it for the elites yeah. that's why i say it's it's a two cent idea it's it's an idea that on the face of it goes hell yeah and then they never thought through any of the complications of it it's 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 stupid yeah that's <clears throat> i hope you get to play overwatch 2 at some point uh um, i do i I'm, I'm excited to play it it looks fun i haven't played overwatch in a while hell yeah get me back in there do it girl um the last game i've been playing is cyberpunk edge runners fuck you i'm not playing cyberpunk 2077 again i do want to talk about i did watch the uh japan animation cyberpunk edge runners from netflix have you heard about this series will yes I, i've been meaning to watch it um because it people tell me it's good and i'm not a huge anime person but i do kind of want to watch it um i i finally watched it it's 10 eps 22 minutes each so it's like a true a true half hour anime um and and cyberpunk edge runners dares to ask the question what if cyberpunk 2077 was good and the answer is it would be amazing (laughs) like (laughs) like it's its own story but it is within night city they keep making a lot of references to cyberpunk 2077 like characters locations etc um even some of the like the when they do phone calls or hacking the the interface is the same from the game Ooh, which is cool. cool yeah i would be more excited about that if i liked the game but even just seeing that they matched it i'm like cool um it's really good like it's just it's it's really pretty good story really great characters and how it builds those characters and like feels like every character has an arc some of the characters have like two episodes arcs which is always it always feels like oh it's too quick but really you're just like 
how did you cramp that much like emotion and detail into this character in such a short amount of time? It's very, very stylish. It's it's very well done. Very well done. Highly recommend it. Um, if if part of it is just like, look, if you like anime, watch it. If you like TV shows, watch it. If you like sci fi, watch it. If you like stylish stuff, watch it. If you if there was even a little part of Cyberpunk 2077 where you're like, hey, this is a cool premise. This is a cool world. I like the idea of Eddie's. I like the idea of fixers, Arasaka versus Militech, et cetera. Watch it. It's got all of that. It's really good. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about Cyberpunk 2077 in a bit in the news section, but I just wanted to shout out and say, hey, that's a very good video game adaptation. They took the world, they borrowed a whole lot of the style, but they said, look, we're telling a story off to the side that doesn't directly tie in, but it's a lot of the exact same themes, types of characters, etc. And it was really well done. Nice. Yeah, I'll check it out. I gotta check, see if Karen wants to watch it, and then if she doesn't, she probably won't, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll storm through it exciting um that's everything you've been playing which means it's time to talk about what i've been playing which this week i beat pokemon white all by myself nobody helped me it was incredible no actually i i said this on that stream but i might have said it quickly the, the elite four was fun like i was sort of trying to figure it out and all all that sort of stuff but jason on that final gets this fight like doing his weird pokemon math and everything was so yeah. cool to watch and just him using me to just make it happen yeah. was really neat and his like calls where he'd be like oh so that'll that'll crit him and that'll do that and like it happening was was so cool to watch so that game was fun i never yeah. want to play pokemon like that again i hate it uh it takes sucks all the joy out of pokemon <laughs> i i i do think i that's one of the things i love about pokemon and about great games in general is that there are games where you can't beat the game unless you go that deep in it unless you know all those little tiny mini details like for example ftl fuck that end boss fight that end boss fight is like you have to like min max the shit out of the game up to that point to 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 win the final boss fight in ftl just just a small example but one of the fantastic things about Pokemon is that the lay person, which is you and I, we come in and we're like, oh, yeah, I guess I kind of understand typing and I understand like same type attack bonus. And I understand like I want to have good coverage, but I'm not much better than beyond that. And I can I can get my way through these fights. You know, it's going to be a challenge, but it's not beating my head against it. Whereas Jason can come in and he can find that difficulty he wants and he can keep playing the game. And there's the whole end game, which adds a lot of the difficulty. So it's one of those things where there's like multiple levels of understanding and you can have enjoyment and you can beat the game at each and every single level of understanding. And yeah. that's kind of the, that's kind of the brilliance of Pokemon is that because of the mechanics and complexity and simplicity of it, everybody can have fun with that game. You don't have to be good at it. Right, and, and it's kind of nice, like, playing it this way, so, like, if I was playing Pokemon White on my own, I would not have done Elite Four. I would have just been leveling up until I could beat yeah. them level-wise, because I I just, I'm, I can't wrap my head around the moves and stuff, just no matter how hard I try and look at that sheet i just have a terrible time with it and i don't know why but i think i think part of it is you do get it because you get it about the same that i do it's just that when somebody like jason or zach comes along and their understanding of the game is so much more in depth it makes you feel like you don't know anything but i'm telling yes. you you don't have to have anywhere near their <clears throat> level of knowledge to no so i agree it. but it's like when they're on there it's like I had those two fire moves and I would choose one and Jason would be like, yeah, the other one does much, much more damage. And I'd be like, oh, okay. But because it doesn't surface that in the fight menu, it surfaces yeah, that just, in the other menu. So I'm just like, you just got to kind of know, know like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of those things where like, whenever I have two moves of the same type, I always look at them. I have to look at them a couple times to be like, oh, this is the good one. And this is the bad one. So I should always pick the good one just yeah. based off power. That's it. I literally just look at power and accuracy. I don't go into, I don't, I don't give a fucking shit about special attack, special defense. Honestly, I don't care about that at all. So that, like, again, back to the beauty. I don't, I don't engage with like 75% of the attack combat me mechanics in Pokemon, but I still yeah. do fine. I still, I still, I don't want to say breeze through, but I beat Pokemon white on my own. Like it's totally doable and it's fun yeah yeah so yeah i think that but i just back to like if i was playing it on my own i would have probably spent another couple hours trying to level up before yeah. doing that but i'm glad we did it for stream i'm glad we got through it uh it worked out 
Um, overall, really enjoyed Pokemon White. So I think I might play White 2 on my own, which will be fun. Man, I'm so stuffy this you morning. Should just, you should just keep playing, because apparently, like, the endgame content in White is, like, a whole new game. Like, there's a shitload of stuff there. Oh, really? I should do that. Yeah, like, like think about the whole northeastern section of the map you have not been to yet. Oh, wow. Maybe I'll do that. That's like it's huge. That's yeah, a smart way to do it. Um, so yes. So moving on, uh, I've been playing some Dube Rock Galactic. It's the classic. About to be a new season, so I'm rushing to try to do everything for the previous season. Um, that game is also super fun. Uh, it's they've made it a lot easier to play by yourself. They made it a lot easier for friends to join in. Public matches, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm slowly unlocking everything. The cool thing that Deep Rock does is when the new season rolls around, all the previous season stuff just goes into the loot boxes that you can find in the wild. So it's like oh. you don't lose out on them. You just can get them a, a different way. Um, so that's really fun. Uh, I, I really like that game. The new season they just announced was Plague, like Plague something, uh, which will be interesting to see. Uh... Yeah, I don't know what it is. That game comes back in waves, kind of like Sea of Thieves, where you're just like, oh, let's play it a bunch right now, and then, and then move yeah. on. Um, and then I have been playing with my Steam Deck that I got. Mm. Uh, excited to have that. I have I have been so busy that I purposefully like charged it, installed some games, and like have left it in its case, because I just haven't had time to engage with it as much. I played some Vampire Survivors, which felt great. Um, I was having some trouble with the sticks, like my thumbs staying on them, but then I realized I was just holding it incorrectly. I was like tucking my palms too deep oh, when they should yeah. be holding it at the sides a little bit more. So that kind of, that effectively fixed that whole problem. Um, I have plans to, inst the, I can never remember how it's pronounced. It's like back, ba Bassetera is an OS for, it's like a launch box. Yeah. OS for retro games, but it completely runs off of the SD card slot, so you don't have to worry about hurting your uh, Steam oh, OS you... install at all. So yeah. you just dual boot, or yeah, you boot into the Bassetera, and then it has all of your games and everything. The best thing, uh, since Steam runs on Linux, you can plug in hard drives and just move the ROMs onto there with the Steam menu, or with the Linux menu, which is super helpful. Um, and for what I've seen in YouTube videos, it looks great, runs great. The other thing you can do is you can do Xbox Game Pass installed to Linux. I believe oh, wow. you can only stream currently. That's fine. I've I done that before. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Xbox eventually like does some sort of app for the Steam Deck. Like, Who knows what that economy is. Uh, that would be really neat. But yes, I, I need some more formal time with it before I can be like, I hate this thing. I love this thing. Because uh, I need a good use case for it. Because right now, I've just been so antsy to get back to playing Fire Emblem on that pocket. So like, that's what I'm doing a lot why right don't, now. Why don't you play Fire Emblem on the Steam Deck? Because the pocket's perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing that it does, so, like, the Citrus stuff works, I think it emulates up to, like, PS3, which is really great. Um, wow! That's yeah. good. Um, and, like, the the worst case scenario is the resolution, you just have to run it at, like, one times for some games, but most go up to, like, three times. So it's, like, yeah. it, it's not a drawback, it's just it doesn't look as perfect up res, you know? Um... So I'm very excited to play around with that more. I I'm loving it so far. I'm glad it's here. Um, honestly, still was not expecting it this soon. I, I wanted it in, like, January. Well, did <laughs> like, you see that all of them are now available with one to two week delay? Yeah. As in, you buy it now, you'll get it within two weeks? They, I don't know how, but they have killed it with the manufacturing. I, I saw oh, something yeah. about how they, they've already manufactured, a, I think it was a million of them or something? In this economy? Like, good for them. And they released the dock, so you can order the dock now. And I had just, yeah. I just had ordered a dock off Amazon, so I went and canceled that because it's a little bit more expensive. But I'd rather get the one from Steam and yeah. Valve to make sure it works uh, like properly. Uh, so that'll be fun. I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's so cool. Uh, they do a great job of like these are the Steam verified. These are the ones that 
are very questionable. Not quite verified, but they're playable. And then these are the ones that yeah. are totally untested. So you can just go in there and like mess around with stuff. Um, That's nice. So yeah, it'll it'll be fun to hop into. Uh, the, the other thing I was gonna say is Steam Next Fest is going on right now. I downloaded a bunch of demos. I was thinking this weekend of streaming, uh, just me playing through a bunch of demos. Uh, there were some cool. There was one that was like. <clears throat> you know in Unreal Engine 5, you ever seen screenshots where they have like the AI bubbles and they're like yeah. do the So there was a game like that, but it was like organization and I think it was like an incremental game at the same time. And it that just like I was going to send you a screenshot of it cuz it looks so crazy. Um I'm trying to bring up Steam to see what the name of it was. But I downloaded that. I downloaded a couple other day other games that just look like uh just fun to try. That's the thing I like about Steam Next Fest, and there the other ones is like you're just downloading games to try them, and like mm -hmm. demos are back in a big way. So it's really uh, Master Plan Tycoon. It's called if you want to look it up. But uh, <clears throat> that kind of looks like uh, Mini Metro slash Mini Motorways slash the oh, yeah. Unreal Engine uh, thing. So I'm gonna try that out and see how it goes. So it's probably this weekend I'm going to stream that and uh, people can check that out. So yes, sounds like fun. That's pretty much all I've been playing. I, I don't think I don't think I'm missing anything. I've been I've been so busy this week. I I, I don't have time for anything. Um, oh you 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 be shut up. Um, it's too early for any of this. Uh, I think it's time for the news. Let's do it. Which means I gotta play the news theme. I'm gonna hit the news song and run and grab some tissues. So here it goes. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you though. Unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Um, I I think Will died. He has disappeared from stream while I was looking away. So rest in peace. Uh, we'll let you know the memorial service plans as soon as we have them. Will Crosby, 1993 to 2022, cause of death, Steam Deck. 94, More silence. thank you. Okay, gotcha. Not, that, not an old, decrepit piece of shit. Hey, um, Will! What? How do you feel about Chris Pratt's Mario voice? <sighs> God, like we knew he was going to do it. We knew he was going to do. I, I, I said in the discord, it's 90 percent Chris Pratt, 10 percent fake ass Italian. Yeah, and, I, so yeah. I, I feel like we didn't I, I'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt, so don't think I'm on his side. I feel like we didn't hear enough of it to know exactly what he's doing, because in the first section, it just sounds like Chris Pratt being like, yes, where am yes. I? And then the, the, the second accent half, comes out when he says like he says like next stop mushroom kingdom. Like, yeah. Like he puts a little bit on it and it's just like you fucker. You you fuck you buddy. Come on. Did you hear you heard the French one, right? The French the dub French is, one is perfect. French, it's perfect. It's not Charles Martinet, but it's it's like a very good Mario take and he's like next stop a champignon pignon and it's just yeah, like it was yeah. So good. <laughs> French Italian, I love French. it. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's I okay, other than let's we got a lot of stuff to cover. So anything else on Chris Pratt voice other than it's basically as half assed as we thought it would be? Well Sorry, my my Is that your laundry? It's my wash it's my washing machine, yeah. Oh my washing do we have the same washing machine? Mine does the same tune. Um, LG? LG baby. Life's good, baby. Yeah. Whoa, LG gang. Life's LG. good. Laundry great. Oh, what's your top ten LG tips, man? Let's go. Um, so Number first one, of all, you gotta put the put the clothes in, in the washer first. <laughs> um, always put bleach in, no matter what color. Uh, and you know, take a sip for yourself. Little for the little for the washer. Sip for yourself. Little, little for the washer. washer. That's how you keep COVID at bay, baby. <laughs> um, fuck. Uh, 
The other thing I wanted to point out was uh, I thought Jack Black and Bowser was okay. Um, he yeah, he's really good. Cool. But they were doing stuff to him, right? Like that was not yes. raw Jack Black. No, why can't they raw. fucking do that? Why can't they do that to Mario? Because it's uh, I, look at this point, put him through one of your $10 million AI auto tune Italian accent things, no, because I don't want why? fucking raw Chris Pratt. I don't want raw Chris Pratt. You know why? Because Chris Pratt's probably a bitch. And they probably said to Jack Black, they're like, hey, can we lower your voice, blah, blah, blah. And Jack's like, yeah, whatever, man. I'm, I'm, here, for, I'm yeah. here for you. This is your show. I want to create your vision. Like, he would say something like that. And Chris Pratt would be like, what the fuck? Don't change my voice, you pieces of shit. Do you know who yeah. I am? Um, so I feel like there's a bit of that. Uh, yeah. And the other it thing just, is can... the, the Italian version <laughs> just sounds like another oh. chris pratt speaking italian so i love oh, that the I didn't, French I didn't watch that one it's the best <laughs> i think the, i love all the memes coming out of this but i think the one i really love was it was it was a video of paparazzi coming across the the supermodel gigi haddad or or whatever her last name is and it's just it's just it's like a crowd of people and they're all taking pictures of her and it's and it's in Italy and you just hear this Italian guy going, Gigi, oh Gigi, I'm so beautiful, Gigi, in like the most ridiculous Italian accent. And everybody was like, this is what Mario should sound like <laughs> because this is what real Italians sound like. Um, but I just, I, I just to cap off the whole thing, it just kind of brings back, uh, normally I don't give a shit about voice acting, right? I haven't really cared about it. But there's the line, like the protest that keeps coming up and it makes more and more sense, which is when you have a TV show or an animated show or whatever, you get a voice actor like that is their profession is voice acting and they fucking kill it. Right. But whenever it goes to like big budget or a movie, they're just like, we have to get a real actor. And 90% of the time, the real actor is not a good voice actor. And it really yeah. should just go back to you're spending a shitload of money on this movie. Make it as good as possible, which means hire the voice actor for voice acting roles. And, and this is just a perfect example of that, where they said, we've got to get we've got to get a big voice name. We've got to get Chris Pratt. And it turns out Chris Pratt's a dog shit voice actor when because because he just talks yeah. like himself. So get and a real he's... person in there. And I will say, as someone who has recently been watching a ton of behind the scenes of Chris Pratt voice acting, he's a pretty, like, he's a good voice actor in the sense of acting while using his voice. Like, he's very yeah. into it. He's clearly, like, I don't think he's some big douche or something. Like, he's clearly having fun. But he's just doing his voice, which is the thing. Like, that's not voice acting. You're just acting while talking. Uh, which is fine because I mean he's a good actor. There's a reason he's yeah. in things, but, but I don't think try and you... cast him into into a completely different role that his voice doesn't right. fit in. You know? So for these movies, you obviously they want the marketing star power, saying Chris Pratt. So just plug him into some cameo role, market yeah. Chris Pratt, and just don't have the main character be Chris Pratt. It's like, it's yeah, not, I I give them a pass on that. That's not lying. <laughs> if we get a good movie it's... out of it. Yeah. And, and it's and like there are actors like like Jack Black, fantastic voice actor. You know, he fits as Bowser, you know, totally. uh, 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 Peel and Charlie Day. Like those, I'm sure, are going to work out just fine. It's just fuck. It's just like it, on top of that, the movie just looks generic as fuck. Like yeah. it's it's a fish out of water story, pretty much. That's that's kind of I don't want to say they confirmed it, but he pops out and he's like, where the hell am I? What's going on here? And he's a plumber from Brooklyn. So it's like, great. So you're going to they're just it, this is going to be a generic ass movie. And I just want to say just to cap it off. I know we got a lot of the news stories to get to. It wasn't even that good of a trailer. It spends the first 40 seconds in like Ice Kingdom. Yeah, where we have Bowser. But it's we don't care about the Ice Kingdom. And then the rest of it is just like a little bit of Mario. It's just not even a well cut trailer. Like it doesn't build hype yeah. at all. It's it's not even a good reveal trailer. It's it's it was just bad all around. So uh, I'm still going to go see it. Opening night, subpixel. Oh, but. Yeah. I'm calling it. Chris Pratt is gets like live action. Chris Pratt gets sucked down a toilet and popped out of that pipe. I just know it. I know the beginning God of that movie's live it. action. It has to be. It, it can't be animated it. into animated. It, it's gonna be, and I know it. He's gonna stumble upon something. He's gonna be like, he's gonna left this house, and then he forgot something, so he's coming back, and then he falls into the green pipe. Why That's would it. they do that, though? They didn't. They don't need to do that, because they don't have the balls to do that right. 
you know? I know. I mean, Lego Movie did it pretty well. I think Lego Movie did it pretty well. The original Super Mario Brothers live action movie did it pretty well because it was so over the top. But you can't make a generic ass fish out of water movie and make it a Mario movie. Like, that's not good enough anymore. But they, they, it should have just been check them out. They live in the this is Mario. He lives in the Mushroom Kingdom. You know, but why is it fish out of water? Like Mario is so very easy to understand. Um, yeah, exactly. It's it's because it's executives who know dog shit about it. And they go, he's what? He's a plumber from Brooklyn, but he lives in the Mushroom Kingdom. How did he get there? Origin story. I'm I'm picturing like first first movie is an origin. The second one is like he has to go to a new land and their their fucking mind is spinning in these ruts where they're like, what made a lot of money? Origin stories. Just keep making that shit over and over again. How do we how do we how do right. we bootstrap a franchise origin story? And fuckers. Who's Shigeru? Miyamoto? What, what Miyamoto I saying? Was, I thought this man was American. What are we doing? God, I just I'm so upset because they're throwing a lot of money and star power at this and it could yeah. have been amazing. And every single time they open their mouths or show us something, it gets worse. Yeah. Um. So that's the Mario trailer. I'm, I'm excited. We, we can't wait to see it. We're very hyped. Oh, boy. Uh, Ian Gibson. Um, Hi. We're a fan of re remasters here when they bring old games to the new... <laughs> consoles like i mean i can think of system shock that one's coming out pretty soon i'm excited for that i hope a good siphon filter one comes out listen i would take Death a metal Fish. gear solid one that'd be fun to see that yeah. in a new way um but one of those games Rough. it's so hard to play that i'm so happy they're doing this because it's nowhere you can't get i've it. always wanted to play it i've always wanted to play it but yeah, i haven't been able to i mean i think you could probably if you're if if you have the resources you might be able to play it like I think you could get, maybe get it on PC, but who has a PC? I think maybe a PS4 or PS5 you could probably play it on, but nobody, nobody has a PS5. They're, nobody has a PS5. They're impossible to find. Um, so that's why there's Sony not a lot of copies either. I don't. I don't think yeah. they sold a lot of. Copies and I don't think they ever gave it out for free multiple months in a row. Um, no. Or free Definitely on one of their not. services currently. Um, yeah. No. But Horizon Zero Dawn, finally, Sony has been brave enough to announce that they're going to remaster it. And, uh, well, you know, they haven't. This is a rumor, but this has been confirmed by multiple different sources that a Horizon Zero Dawn remaster is in the works for PS5. Uh, it has new character models, lighting and animations, including accessibility features, graphics modes and quality of life improvements to the gameplay itself. Folks, this is a fucking update. This game already exists on the PS5. It's in PlayStation Plus library. Um, there's no reason you can't play this game right now on PS5 or the PC. This just feels like an update, right? This is a, this is a this is a good quality of life. Thank you, Daddy. You're the best update. Where you come out and say, "Hey, you know all those yeah. things we did for the sequel? We're just going to back compat them into Horizon Zero Dawn real quick." Here's the problem. This is um, there's not a price tag attached to this, but this sounds like they are trying to launch this as a full blown seventy dollar title, which is ridiculous. It's yes. obscene. And and I think you're right. Like best case scenario, this is misreported. They're actually doing a, an update, like that's just being pushed out. It's free, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Horizon Zero Dawn remastered PS5 edition, seventy dollars, no upgrade path. Um, not you can't upgrade oh your current God. one that you got for free, which I know is probably what it's gonna be. Um, this is just it's just like Sony is all over the place now because on the one hand they finally seen the light, which is that Xbox, Xbox Game Pass, the way they're approaching their ecosystem is the way forward, right? It's all about SaaS subscription as a service. And they finally brought PlayStation Plus into that fold. And they have a pretty good library on PlayStation Plus. Um, but they keep doing this dog shit stuff where they're like, mm, no, your PS4 version doesn't get you the PS5 version. You got to pay $10 to upgrade. Um, all, all just all sorts of wonky shit like that with their first party games. And then just pointless remasters and remakes where they're wasting resources on Last of Us Part 1 uh where they're they're wasting money on this and it's like no this is old school 
this is this is the game came out on PlayStation. The game came out on N64 and you're doing a whole full blown remaster for it for the GameCube because you can't play N64 games on the GameCube. I can go play this game right fucking now on my PS5 and I never bought the game because I have PlayStation Plus and it'll yeah. run fine and it'll look fine. It won't have all the options of, of Forbidden West, but it's still a very beautiful PS4 game like that's fine. There's zero need for the to do for them to do this, except they're doing the Skyrim thing, which is, hey, what if we just take something that was successful and keep really, really re-releasing it over and over again to grab a little bit more money with each version? That's the other thing is this is Horizon Zero Dawn is nowhere near like I would no. claim Skyrim deserved a one big remaster when like yes. the Xbox One or Series X came out. Like I don't think it deserves all of these remasters, but that makes sense. I don't think Horizon Zero Dawn ever really deserves a remaster. It's no. new enough that I like <clears throat> maybe if you're porting it to like virtual reality in 2045 so you can live inside Horizon Zero Dawn. That's the only time we're doing it. Like it's still a pretty game. Like that was the one thing I yeah. didn't have an issue with was how beautiful it was. So just to like be like oh same with last of us like that even made more sense because it was like yes there's a ps4 version of it but it was all designed for ps3 and to it, ps5 yeah, it was PS3. like that's yeah. at least some of a pass for it and and we saw what they were doing uh but this is just like what like ah uh, like at this point they're just saying hey we made that game not good and we're hiding it by saying we're improving the graphics yeah which is ridiculous that's that's a bad stance to take so yeah Crazy. fuck them anyways fuck uh let's talk let's talk about cd speaking of fucking let's talk about cd project red fuck them um they came out with some uh announcements this week i believe this was like a shareholder presentation but they also just released it to the public they've got some stuff in the works number one previously announced brand new witcher trilogy um I can't remember the specifics on whether it basically it sounds like this is not going to be about Geralt of Rivia, but it's going to be in the Witcher world. There's three games planned. The first one's heavy in development right now. Uh, the next one is a cyberpunk sequel. Oh, wait, well, sequ let me just point out. There's a new Witcher yeah. trilogy, a new game Sirius by Molasses Flood and a new game Canis Majoris by a third party. So there's five yeah. Witcher games. Five Witcher games, yes. But th the the main new Witcher trilogy is CD Projekt Red. Yeah, CD yeah. Projekt. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is uh, an announced sequel to Cyberpunk. They are in pre production on a uh, sequel to Cyberpunk 2077 and a brand new IP that is also in pre production. I um, I look. Let's let's take these one by one. New Witcher trilogy. Yeah, sure. They made those games great keep going i like that they're spinning it out and they're not doing halo four five six where they're they're stretching it too far they're going in a different direction right i think we're all on board with that one yes are you asking me new i <laughs> new ip new ip <laughs> cd project red they've made some great games i think i can kind of trust them with something of their own uh sure new ip show me what you got i'm, I'm curious right i'm okay with that yeah, sorry. I'm just they have they have deeper slides for each of these. I know. I don't want to go um, into all of those. Though. Well, I was just gonna say it's 100. percent It's all I uh, currently in the conceptual phase. Yeah, it's it's brand new. IP, <laughs> it's great. Basically, yeah. Um, Cyberpunk sequel though. You know, it's funny they announced this because I was watching Cyberpunk Edge Runners and I was going. Do you think they'll ever make a sequel to Cyberpunk 2077? And like in my head, I said, yes, of course they will. They have that license and like they can't just let that drop. There's so much more they can do. But then in my other head, I was like, you got to have a lot of balls to come out with Cyberpunk 2077 2 when the first game is just like the pinnacle of failed game launches. Like... That takes a lot of balls to come out with it with the same team, same property and everything and say, no, we'll do it right this time, even though we never really corrected the first one. And so, like, after watching Edge Runners, I understand why everybody's playing Cyberpunk again now, because Edge Runners was fucking cool. But even watching Edge Runners was not enough to make me boot up Cyberpunk 2077 again. That's how much of a fucking dumpster fire it was. So, 
I don't know. I'm like, I know they, I know, I know they want to, they probably should, but at the same time, I'm hesitant about this. How, how are you feeling? It's just, I don't, their cyberpunk world always seems so tame. And when yeah. that trailer for edge runners came out on YouTube and there was like tits and blood and like fucking and like cybernetic yeah. shit. I was like, fuck yeah, this is what cyberpunk 2077 need to be. And I don't mean to go back to that incredible meme tweet when the guy was like, will you be able to have sex in multiple positions in cyberpunk 2077? And the, they replied like, uh, but like, not that, but that detail needs to be in the whole, like, I need to feel like I'm in a fucking Blade Runner cyberpunk crazy world where, like, just fucked up shit is happening. And they had some of that. Like, yeah, you could walk past the, like, dildo store or whatever, but it wasn't ever, yeah. like, to the point where I'm just like, I need to get to the next place so I don't see all, like, these people drugged out on <laughs> chems and shit. Like, yeah. it never felt fully realized. So that's the one thing I want from this is just give us the world that you promised where an NPC isn't just walking back and forth on a crosswalk all day and that's their day. It's crazy. Uh, like give everyone life and, and make it breathing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think honestly, you talking about it has just completely deflated any hopes I had for the cyberpunk sequel, because I just realized it's not like a sea of thieves, right? Sea of thieves great underlying mechanics great world great physics system and everything the problem is just the progression and what you do in that game beyond an hour or two right so it's yeah. one of those things where i'm like i can see the path to a good game there cyberpunk felt bad played bad ran bad the world was bad like the cops were bad the driving was bad like everything in that game was awful and so when i think how much they would have to do to make it better and do i trust them to do that and the answer is no i i want a cyberpunk game but i don't want it from cd project red because yeah. i've already i've already okay. had their cyberpunk game and like like you said it was tame it was half-assed it was broken it wasn't fully realized that world never that city never felt alive it just felt like like a potemkin city like just a bunch of just half ass janky sprites and shit running around and it was just like god no this is bad so thanks thanks will now i'm not looking forward to it ah <sighs> you're welcome um yeah i'm watch the show though show's great show's great yeah i need to watch it um we're getting down to the wire here because i know we both have to go to work <laughs> um so for the middling uh let's just quickly go through this i'll just read out the highlights and we can uh kind of react uh ellie fanning correctly guessed by ian gibson will be in the next kojima game uh they revealed yeah. that who am i poster so and but now there's a new where am i poster and yeah we don't know i don't who know that who that is. is i'll say my guess here it kind of looks like Maisie williams from game of thrones i see i saw you say that and i can see it but i also like i'm not as confident as as, yeah. as ellie fanning though yeah um Need for Speed Unbound was announced. Uh, it kind of looks like Underground. It, well, well, let's say it was it was it was leaked, then announced, and it's coming out in December, which is honestly I'm okay with that schedule. Like they're just like, look, we know the franchise is in a rough place. Um, I I can't remember who made it. I think this is Criterion, but I think Codemasters has a hand in it, which is Codemasters is is the um, the group of uh, racing developers that was recently acquired by EA, but they gotcha. kind of have the racing pedigree. Looks pretty cool. I'm optimistic. It has a lot of anime ass elements to it, like cell shading, and it looks like it's heavy on the customization. And it's also next gen only, next gen and PC only. So that's a good sign as well. So Ooh. honestly, I'm going to play it because just a hot tip. I'm pretty sure you get like the first 10 hours free with EA Play, which is free with Xbox Game Pass. So as long as you've got Game Pass, you can probably play 10 hours of that game for free. Smart. I'm going to be doing that as well. Uh, Jim Ryan flew to Brussels apparently to appeal to the Microsoft Call of Duty deal in person. Uh, I feel like he's the guy from Firefest who, in like ten years, yeah. is just gonna be like, "I blew him, I blew them all." 
like to get the water. It's just to get the game. Like I to- <laughs> like I understand why my PlayStation and Sony are bending over backwards, like they're on their knees groveling to stop the Microsoft uh, Activision Blizzard King deal. They have to. They have an obligation to their shareholders, and this is really putting them at risk. But it's just ridiculous some of their arguments where they're like, "This is going to kill us. This is like monopolization. You can't you can't allow these exclusivity deals." And meanwhile, they've got like all their fucking Final Fantasy Square Enix exclusivity deals yeah. out the all their all their Kojima stuff, and it's just like you're doing this shit on the side all the time and call of duty is big but it's also not the only thing in the industry it's it's actually on a downwards trend call of duty right now so like it's it's just funny to see him grovel i can't wait for this deal to close so i can finally play call of duty on game pass yeah i'm surprised they're not like fighting fire with fire like try to go out and get like get Fortnite or like get like you wouldn't but like get they bought bungie they bought bungie like you know (laughs) Yeah, we bought. They probably just. We're gonna miss Call of Duty. Honestly, like Xbox, the purchases they've been making are because Microsoft's giving them cash, and um, I bet I bet PlayStation doesn't doesn't have access to that much cash from Sony to be able to go around and start making huge deals like that. Yeah. Um. Next up, Nintendo completes Dynamo Pictures acquisition. I believe they also announced the. Is that the Nintendo Pictures? Is just what it is now. Yes. Yeah, they renamed it Nintendo Pictures. Basically, they're going to start doing some more adaptations of their IPs. So be on the lookout for more Chris Pratt in more Mario movies or fucking who knows, man. Make a good Captain Toad movie. Oh, I, I don't know. I just had the horrible vision where they're going to make a Zelda movie and Link's going to talk. and I, I already don't like that. Fuck. I don't. Let's just end it. Let's end yeah, it. I'm sorry. Uh, folks... Thank you so much for tuning in. This will be, uh, you're on YouTube or you're on the podcast app. Sorry, my nose is so, st- I don't know why. Um, we, uh, we've got things coming up. Uh, I think tomorrow, Saturday or Sunday this weekend, I'm going to try to stream some of those Steam Next Fest games. Uh, I also want to open a bunch of the cards I bought, so I might do that stream as well. Um, Tuesday, I think we're going to try to start Spooky Pixel. I'm so... i, I got to figure that out. I've been so wrapped up in Pokemon that we haven't figured any of that out, so we'll figure that out. Uh, I'm Will Crosby. That's Ian Gibson. Subpixelfilms.com is where you can go to see all of our lovely content. Jake just put out a video about Islanders yesterday. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. It made me feel like, hey, my videos suck. Um, well, yeah. Jake's a pretty good writer. Um, so please go tune into that. Uh, is there anything else coming up? I don't think so. Some Comic-Con news this weekend. I think, I think that's it, right? That's pretty much it, yeah. That's it. Okay, folks. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.